Hi, my name is Maggie McFadden, and today I have the pleasure of introducing Jane Claire Braswell. I personally have had the honor of being right below Jane Claire's locker cubby this year, which has definitely brought some more laughter into my life, especially over our almost daily awkward shimmies around each other and many apologies when we try to grab books at the same time. Her lighthearted attitude, though, shines through in these many unavoidable situations, and I think anyone who knows Jane Claire would agree that she has such an outgoing, fun, and warm personality that is seen in all she does. She is willing to talk to anyone, but not only that, she will listen and give you her full attention, which truly shows just how much she cares about everyone she interacts with. She is one of the funniest people you will ever meet and can easily make anyone laugh. And more, Jane Claire is a sports star in soccer and tennis and can make shots that I can only dream of, but which is no doubt a result of the incredible hard work that she puts into everything she does. Jane Claire has blessed the class of 2022 for almost 15 years now, so I truly cannot wait to hear what she's going to say today. Please help me give it up for the amazing, one and only, Jane Claire Braswell. If you know me well, then you know I spent most of my childhood walking barefoot around my neighborhood, Chickasaw Gardens. You may be wondering why a mother would let her six-year-old daughter loose in a neighborhood without shoes on, but every neighbor considered me like their own. I spent countless hours knocking on doors looking for playmates, no matter their age, until the sun went down. I would do anything, and I mean anything at all, to connect with other people. Around the age of eight, I think this lifestyle of mine reached a point of concern. One day, my usual playmates, who were closer to my age, were not home, and I reached a point of desperation. I was sick of sitting bored on the couch at home, so I decided to ring the doorbell of my across-the-street neighbor, who was a senior in high school at the time at St. Mary's. I, pre I proceeded to ask Madeline's mom if she was home and was told to go find her back in her room. I quickly scurried to her door, and you know exactly what she was probably thinking. Why did my mom let the girl 11 years younger than me into my house again? She was just enjoying a relaxing Saturday off of school, taking, taking some, some advantage of free time she had laying in bed watching movies. I was willing to sit on a couch near her in silence, surrounded by six cats, which I'm deathly allergic to and highly dislike if you know me, for approximately four hours, all because I just wanted to be with a friend. This resulted in my entire body covered in hives, difficulty breathing, multiple baths filled with oil, and about 12 different lotions when I came home to my parents that night. I was in literal pain from head to toe, covered in cat hair and red spots, but I think my overly extroverted self thought, at the time thought it was worth it. I also did not quite understand what it meant to overstay a welcome, so I enjoyed many family dinners with many different families. <laughs> After a while, before even speaking my standard line, is so-and-so home, can she play? Parents greeted me with an open door. We moved neighborhoods, I learned to drive, and I also developed a better awareness of social cues. I still frequently find myself knocking on doors for many different reasons, but it primarily all stems upon building relationships, as it always has. As an extrovert who has no problem reaching out, meeting new friends, and making connections with those around me, I'll be the first to say relationships are something that I have valued from a young age, and I think that is why I acted the way I did in my neighborhood. There are those friends you have that are the ones you don't normally see outside of school, but, are, but you always wave to when you pass in the hallway, and then there's those other friends you have that you spend every weekend with. But there's value in every single one of those connections, and I consider each to be important. There have also been plenty of doors I would have, ha I would have rather avoided knocking on, but realized, sometimes the hard way, that I needed help from the people behind them. After failing multiple, and I mean multiple, pre-cal tests, during the pandemic, and honestly after the pandemic too, I learned asking a teacher for help was okay. I used to feel ashamed asking for help, thinking the person I was asking would think I didn't listen the first time or just straight up think I was dumb, but I'm here to tell you that is not the case and I think Ms. Loden can too. I am now more comfortable reaching out when I'm confused in a class for the sake of understanding and it did, it did not take long for me to realize teachers are happy to help their students and appreciate your effort and engagement. 
Looking back, I realized how privileged I was to safely walk around the streets of my neighborhood for hours at su such a young age, ducking in and out of houses, building lifelong relationships and friendships, while now still maintaining this lifestyle as I am also realizing the importance of speaking up for yourself and asking for help when it's most needed. Now looking into my future, I am filled with nothing but pure exuberance to be able to walk around a dorm hallway, knocking on doors and building lifelong connections. As someone who rarely wants to be alone, I am ready to reach out in this new chapter of my life with socks on or not. To my class of 2022, thank you for being there with and for me since pre-K. I love knowing I have a relationship with each and every one of you. Thank you.